So if it doesn't cut your head off, it will electrocute you. So you will die no matter what, but yeah. Hello and welcome to episode 23 of Number One Crude Mistakes with myself, Glenn, the Latin-tongued lover from Number One Projects. (laughs) And KJ, the metal grinder from Crude But Efficient. And Havard, Norway's answer to Steven Spielberg from Behind the Mistakes. (laughs) (laughs) How are you I doing, fellas? Were, I thought you were going to say Stephen Colbert or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, You're going to take over the Tonight to Show now? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I saw John Stewart now is uh, back uh, doing the primetime uh, hosting. So, uh, yeah, got a bit inspired. <laughs> <laughs> Just start off by saying, well done, guys, on your both your videos. They're both absolutely fantastic, the knife videos. <laughs> and likewise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, well done, everyone who participated, <laughs> I think, in in each way. <laughs> but then again, finally, I, I will never see a knife again in my life. So I'm, <laughs> I have now sharpened a couple of spoons, and those are my go-to tools now. I, I, don't, I don't do knives. <laughs> It's really nice that it's over. <laughs> it was this was much worse than I thought it would be on my psyche. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's messed up all my projects as well. I've not got, I've got plenty of videos out, but none of them have been decent and focused on properly. Yeah, yeah, we've well, learned a lot this <laughs> with this yeah. knife along. Yeah, no more challenges from us guys. <laughs> <laughs> Well, luckily we have a short-term memory, so, I mean. Yeah, yeah. So, sometime probably. over the summer we probably have a new challenge. <laughs> I'm sorry, we've got what? Sorry? What? Yeah? <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah. That joke o'clock. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we might as well continue just talking about the knife along for one last time, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, let's yeah. purge it. <laughs> so apart from it being a pain in the ass, it was a lot of good fun as well. I did enjoy making my knife. I thought it was great. And I was pleased with my knife. Not incredibly pleased with my video, I've got to say. I lost footage. I took yeah. bad footage. So I think I could have done a lot more with it. But uh, I, have been, I have been rewarded by the amount of views it's had, so that's all good. <laughs> Yeah, that losing footage is always sad. Yeah. I we had our car breakdown on our road trip in Australia and we decided to to moon the camera from the top of the car <laughs> at the roadside with cars passing by and the those pictures are gone. Oh, <laughs> what a loss. Maybe it's a good thing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> at least you've still got the memories. <laughs> oh yes. We're always imprinted <laughs> on innocent bypassers and yeah. <laughs> Trying to drink them away. I don't remember much about that trip, but me and my mate got our asses out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that roughly sums it up. <laughs> well, it was a really, it was a fun experience making the knife. But it was also a lot of those oh, I'm afraid to take the ne- next step because if I mess it up, uh, getting yeah. back to this point will be really, really <laughs> painful. Actually, so, yeah. I think I think that's really nice. You know, I think you know you're onto a good project and one you're invested in when it gets like that. Yeah. And what's a deadline as well? Yeah. Creeping up. And yeah. I remember the first uh, strum stick I built and um, Every process, I'd spend at least three hours procrastinating over before I started it again, thinking, "This, if this screws it up, I've got to start all over again." You did some uh, great transitions in your video, KJ. I really quite like the way you. And I can hear angle grinding again outside now. So let's go back to the outside. <laughs> <laughs> if, if only I, I, I mean, I wished I had a, a clone that did all the grinding on this one. Actually, so I think it came from something like that. Yeah. It, I, I had I had good fun with the project and the and the video as well, and I, I have to confess that I'm not 100 percent happy with the last the final shot 
but I had to take it because the knife broke just after it. <laughs> I wouldn't light up anymore. So, okay, fine. That's it's doable. Let's go with that shot. <laughs> I was impressed it lit up at all. Yeah, yeah. At 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 the part, I, I I didn't understand why it didn't light up because I I I turned one of the the filaments backwards. Uh, mm. But then it actually worked surprisingly well. And um, but I think I had a short in the top of the blade because at one point when I was cutting the tomato, you could hear a sizzling <laughs> in the front. <laughs> and I think it was a, a short there that that killed it in the and that in the end as well. Uh, but I, I finally got uh, those I, because I ordered those uh, other filaments I talked about in the video. That's low voltage yeah. version, the three volt, <laughs> <laughs> the not kill you uh, current uh, or voltage <laughs> uh, kind. Uh, those like arrived uh, like three days before uh, the uh, video was okay. supposed to be done. <laughs> so maybe I will go back and uh, and fix the the knife and make it. Actually, you can carry it around and not have to have it plugged into a wall. <laughs> I think that could be an upgrade for the usability. Well, that helps on the functionality of it, yeah. Yeah. It did double up nicely as a as a ceiling light as well, though, didn't it? So. Yeah, a bit. I mean, I haven't uh, the tallest ceiling in my workshop, so... <laughs> So if it doesn't cut your head off, it will electrocute you. So you will die no matter what. But yeah, yeah, yeah it's a it decorative would, piece. It would sculpt me for sure if I had it up like that. But it was a nice, nice sending off. And I have to say uh, thank you so much for the sound effects you you both contributed with. <laughs> it really oh, made really. everything better. That was a funny day. That was. <laughs> I, I was at work and I said you just missed, you sent us a little clip. And I said it's just missing the sound, uh, the uh, sound of a lightsaber. You said just send me the, send me the sound effect, and I, without thinking, just did it straight yeah. away on the phone. <laughs> Great fun. <laughs> yeah. No, none of us thought that others would do that, but it worked out great. <laughs> <laughs> what I really liked, I mean, of course, I didn't feel the pressure like I usually do, because it's a wooden knife, so if I fucked something up, I could just glue it back together again. Um, <laughs> but uh, having this much time, and of course, I, I spent just a fraction of the time in the workshop actually making it, so then, of course, you have all this dead time that you just can fill, so you just allow your brain to just run wild because you have a deadline, so you can't publish the video before that. So, I mean, the one idea after the other just popped up, and I don't know, I'll cram that in. So, <laughs> usually it's like doing a project, spending the most of the time on that while you're getting some footage, and then you just scramble to put it together and get it out there so you can start working again. Here, it's been a bit of the other way around, which has been it, nice. It felt like you spend more time in Photoshop than in actually production <laughs> in the workshop. Yeah, I spent a quite a bit in Photoshop, yeah. But but it was fun uh, revisiting the old uh, green screens and uh, brushing up on that again. So uh, there might be some... I was thinking about getting one of those automatic pull-down curtains things and just swap it out with the green screen so you can just implement it more easily into video projects from here on out. But uh, we'll yeah. see. <laughs> it was... Um, your video was... Just so funny. I've watched the introduction about five times. And then the, <laughs> and the last bit, the uh, the blooper bit was just fantastic. The Latin tongued lover. <laughs> oh that, that just happened and I just broke down and of course <laughs> When I recorded the next one, I could not stop thinking, don't say that, don't say that. And of course, <laughs> that fucked up the video take, or I ended up saying it anyway. Like, God damn, no, Sam. So I have probably five, five or six takes of me saying the wrong thing. So I had to put one of them in. <laughs> no, it was brilliant. It was such a, such a funny video. Yeah, you, you should spend more time with the green screen, I think. <laughs> yeah. And give yourself a little bit more time because that was just brilliant. <laughs> Very creative. So we just um, we need to thank everybody else who participated as well. And that's a um, big thanks to Cormorant Craft Moya, 
Moira, sorry, all the makes, and obviously Tim from Turgworks for his prison shank. Yeah. Thanks very much for joining in, guys. Yeah, they were all <laughs> great in their different fields. I mean, the, yeah. the, the beauty of simplicity of Tim's knife was yeah was really nice and i i do like the the classic curves and the nice uh, handle on uh, on michelle's uh, butter yeah, knife as well that nice yeah yeah, yeah and i mean really uh, nice uh, and it's m the most axe like of all the knives and of course i like that <laughs> <laughs> of course <laughs> it's etching turned out so clean as well yeah yeah you did a great job <laughs> yeah Hopefully we haven't missed anyone because I mean, the hashtag function on Instagram and YouTube kind of sucks at the moment. So yeah. if we have missed anyone, please send us a message because <laughs> we did not do it on purpose. I actually saw a couple of people in my feed actually making knives, but when I checked it out, there was no reference to the knife along and the, there has never been any correspondence with these guys previously. So I just think it's the algorithm just yes. serving that yeah. up based on the knife along being the theme. But yeah, then I thought, should I let them know that they are in a competition without even knowing it? But <laughs> <laughs> just I, th add the I think at least, <laughs> at least one, if not two of them are, are professional knife makers. So uh, I might not... Uh, <laughs> Let them in on the secret. <laughs> That's probably for the best. <laughs> yeah, a similar thing happened with me. I, I noticed a lot of knives coming up in the feed, but then I have had a few Definitely. knife knife follows as well on uh, Instagram, having used the hashtag knife in my every real life put out lately. So, oh. did you get any any blowback on your faking Damascus? I mean, the knife no. community isn't that nice when it comes to that, I think. But <laughs> maybe it went flew under the radar for them. Yeah, no, I don't think any of them have watched it. I didn't. Um, no, I didn't get any hate for that. So I was hoping for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it felt like you were baiting the trolls a little. <laughs> it's always worth a try, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, whatever it works. <laughs> Of course, I have had uh, videos I've put out there before, which haven't really done many views for the first couple of weeks and then taken off. So you never know this time yet. Bring on the hate. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a good idea for the next challenge. Um, <laughs> the hate along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> make, make the one video that baits the most. Uh, awful comments and then oh. you can make whatever just put it out there and sit and wait and give it like a four weeks and then you tally up the comments <laughs> the hate alone that would be great so, so then of course you uh, that's an easy catch like shooting fish in a barrel you yeah. you take the river table people or the pallet wood <laughs> or something it's very easy to get uh, people yeah, you, you want to that. you want to grab as many of them as at once so what can you do to to make all of them go ballistic at the same time. That's the hard part. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. I, I think some would... someone took like a, a nitro powered remote controlled car and they strapped a baby car seat on top of it. And of course, it was only a doll sitting in there, but <laughs> <laughs> people went ballistics in the common field. Like, you can't do that to your baby. And like, people like, it's a doll. It's hilarious. But <laughs> people took it so seriously. <laughs> of course, I have, a, I have a black and white cat now. And we also have a black and white cat toy as well. So, yeah. <laughs> <like that. laughs> oh, there you have it. <laughs> Bring them over. I got some explosives. I mean, I mean, I, no. I <laughs> Blowing up animals, that's probably a good way, place to start if you want to make the trolls. <laughs> yeah. uh, just wanted to uh, add as well, the thanks to everybody that followed along and um, just commented and liked all the knife along stuff. That's been nice as well. Yeah, definitely. So thanks for that, guys. Awesome. Right, what should we talk about now? We've got nothing else now. The knife along stuff. Oh, finally, we can talk about something interesting. <laughs> 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 so the question is, what are what what are everyone doing now when you're not uh, doing a knife paraphernalia? 
Well, I I started uh, and started a build because I was <laughs> I, I didn't want to push forward with a knife. Uh, so I finished that this this weekend. So now I'm sitting on three projects that I just barely started to edit edit one of them. Wow, so <laughs> what are they? Um, the one I'm the one I'm working on. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'm not gonna hold you. <laughs> hold you back too much uh, or hold information from you, I would say. Uh, it's a work table extension. First one. Okay. Uh, and I... Uh, and that was one of those... I, I messed up uh, uh, my measurements. So I... I, You know the classic, you, you missed the, the width of the material as well. So ah, everything, yeah. everything went wonky. And I started to try to, oh, okay, I can fix, fix it like this, but ah, no, I do it tomorrow. And then I got an epiphany while I was lying, lying in bed. So, oh, no, I can fix it in so much easier way so, <laughs> than I did that. So we got a little, actually a little drama curve in that video as well, I think. So that's, that's probably mm. nice. But the, the problem at the moment is that my back is hurting really much. I don't really know why. Uh, so I can't really sit down for that uh, for so long time. So I, so it, as I sit down a lot in my professional job, it's not really something I want to sit down and edit a video in the evening as well. Ah, uh, right. And I don't really have a standing desk at home, and I'm not really that good at standing still either. I'm <laughs> at, all my life I've been good. I, I'm good at walking. I'm good at sitting and laying down. Those are my three. <laughs> but standing still, that's not me. I mean, I start to dance around on the place and move around like a bloody aerobics pass. So, no. I feel like we can put your three skills on your tops trumps card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's me. What have you been up to? Well, it's, it's nice that uh, you mentioned the work table because I am... Uh... I've actually started shooting footage and uh, working on the, the hot table, uh, mm. which is the... the so it's a table along now. <laughs> it's a table along. Uh, so, uh, of course, I have chosen the, uh, the concrete tabletop with the heating cables. And then I listened to the Three Northern Makers podcast here the other day, and actually um, Steve is thinking about making a table as well out of concrete. So, like, all right. But I'm guessing he's not going to put heating cables in it, so that's fine. <laughs> but then he talked about putting like an oak edge around the table, and I like, I like oak. <laughs> 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 and then it's like started thinking about it in a car, and like oh, that sound that that would be really great. And of course, then I don't have to build the form; I can actually just build the the outer ridge of the table and then I can pour the concrete in that should even speed up the process and then yeah I went to the store and looked at some oak and then of course um, I passed the recycling plant as well so uh, I just dropped off some old kids toys and so on and I, I saw a shelf there uh, a huge one from a school or something and it was like a industrial casters and it was all made out of like proper nice plywood and i like no i mean <laughs> i i didn't bring my trailer so i just i drove off and i stopped at the parking lot and i just do i need to go home and get my trailer no i mean maybe if it is there on monday but no so i ended up going back home and getting my trailer and then uh, hauling <laughs> that big thing with me and um of course, the beautiful thing, it was uh, they didn't use any glue putting it together. So I just used a rubber mallet in two minutes. I just knocked it in its individual pieces. So I got a couple of hundred euros worth of free plywood. So I'm pretty stoked, but uh, well, it uh, put a dent in my timetable on uh, Saturday. <laughs> well, we, had, we had a little nice. bit of conversation on Instagram. Hubbard. You were going to ship that to me, weren't you? <laughs> Yeah, no, you flat packed it. Yeah, I think uh, we could do a trade off at the airport. Uh, you were going to get the a, a jointer planer with a helical <laughs> head, so uh, we can swap that in the transit lounge. Just a straight swap, <laughs> money wise. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah money wise and weight wise. Yeah. 
But going back to putting sides on a concrete table, I think that's a really good idea because partly because it protects the sides if, if you so you don't bump into it and ship it. And I think that the getting the sides looking good that is like the hardest thing on a concrete worktop. Because that, that's where the air bubbles hide and you don't see it until you take yeah. the form off and then you have to spackle it in and try to no, make it no, look No, 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 that's, uh, that's just like, uh, what do you call it? Not patina, but that just, yeah, character. That's the word yeah. you use for that and you just <laughs> leave it as be. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I made actually uh, a few concrete tables in my past and yeah, the bubbles is one thing. Um, I've learned to kind of mitigate that, but I, I just leave them in to get that industrial look and i think even with the like the grayish oak around that should fit straight into that aesthetics um but uh then again it's was just gonna be a, a project for fun but if you're gonna start to spend money on oak and of course now i've started thinking about how this is gonna look and it sounds like well, this is gonna be a decent table and of course if you're using oak like binding around the tabletop, then I can't use like fur run of the mill construction lumber for feet. Uh, I mean, I have to do a proper job there as well. And so I'm sliding slightly over to this being a longer, uh, more expensive, <laughs> more complicated project than I thought of. And then, of course, I have to be really careful uh, about uh, getting the heating cables in so they don't ruin anything. But of course, uh, push come to shove, you can just uh, knock the concrete uh, and then do another pour. Because that was <laughs> one of the tables I made. Uh, it was a very thin tabletop, so I couldn't use any metal rods or meshing inside. So I just used uh, this uh, fiber armed uh, um, concrete, which is ridiculously strong. But of course, you have this uh, fiberglass strands sticking up so it's like you had a table with something that looked like <laughs> fur and of course you really have to sand on it to get those uh, away and of course if you if you don't get them like to a very fine level then of course these small strands of fiberglass are sticking up and then it's really annoying on your skin if you're just putting your hands down and one of them just pokes you're like god damn it that's one i forgot to sand down and yeah so i'm not doing that again that's uh that sounds really bad actually yeah sanding concrete is yeah. i mean you don't want to do that uh, i have like a grading disc on my angle grinder but that's too coarse again so uh yeah yeah how do you um if you put a wooden edge around it how do you mitigate the water leaking into the actual oak when you do you do your concrete pour to stop it staining and marking the oak because then you've got the added pressure of trying to sand the wood without sanding the concrete haven't you so yeah that's something i need to think of as a, previously in, in in the molds i've actually used um, uh, food grade oil to, to oh, make it okay. slip and of course yeah. that uh, if you use too much of it, it it will stain or color the top layer of your concrete um, depending on yeah uh, various uh, factors I guess but uh, yeah but I'm, I'm sure if you can I would maybe try to mix it on the drier side as dry as I could get away with but uh, I mean, some some moisture will probably find its way into the oak. Of course, you can make a profile on it that will make it grab the concrete, and then of course you can treat it with oil, so it does, so it's saturated with oil. Um, then of course the the moisture and the concrete will, won't get pulled into the wood, mm -hmm. but then you need a profile or something to make it just not <laughs> slip off the concrete part. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Something to think about anyway before you go ahead. <laughs> yeah, and that's the problem. I have the metal mesh and heating cable just spread out over my um, work table, and I was ready to just mount it, slap together a form, and just uh, pour some concrete. <laughs> but now I have to think about it. So, <laughs> like, make sure I do everything the right way. So, you can always add the 
oak sidings afterwards if you feel like it. That's true. Yeah. You don't uh, have to pour it into it. I mean, that sounds like you're making it. It could be really cool, but it also making a lot of potential problems. Yeah. That just seems like a really good solution, that does KJ. Adding it afterwards. Yeah. I mean, if you if the sides come out spotless, then or in a nice rustic look, then you don't need need the sides. Yep. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> well, keeping on the subject of uh, benches, stroke slash tables, I made an extension to my workbench today. <laughs> <laughs> Great minds and uh, us two think alike. <laughs> well, yeah, you, Michelle, and you two think alike. It was her idea, actually. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> yeah, I, I just made it happen. You know, she uh, she said it would probably be, and I've thought about it for a long time. When I've been filming, I'm generally filming over my shoulder. So um, where you guys like you you have benches that you can stand behind and film from in front of, don't you? And I don't have that, so um, this one's going to fix that problem hopefully. So it folds up at ninety degrees from my bench. Yeah. So that stand. sounds very much like my project, actually. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because well, I don't have that. <laughs> right. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> well, mine, mine took about an hour to make today, KJ, so I'm sure yours, uh, yours is going to be more comprehensive. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that, but... <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't film it, and I'm not making a video out of it. <laughs> oh, and here I was hoping for some rivalry. <laughs> Table <laughs> extension off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I also today, um, because of that same problem, I've made a overhead camera mount as well, which actually fits, which was my idea. But then Mich- I was going to screw something to the ceiling and Shell said, why don't you make it so it fits your French cleat walls? Because then you can move it all over the workshop down that down that one side of the wall. That's so that's what I've done again. Another great idea. So she gets full credit. <laughs> <laughs> I had the same idea because I thought to have like a centralized uh, OSB duct in my roof because I have the old mounting points for the garage door opener. Yeah. And then, of course, I, I have the connection points for the dust hoses at various points in the roof. Uh, and of course, I just put the vacuum onto it. But then I also thought, if I screw up one of these railings where you could put clamps on and you could just move the entire length of the workshop, I could make a camera mount, like which would be in the roof, but you could move it down the center line of the workshop. Yeah. And then, of course, you could, you can get good footage from a distance, but also you could put it right on top of your work table and film straight down. Of course, I'd, I'd need to get a toupee then, but... I mean, that's a, that's a small cost. <laughs> I don't or a you need, hat. You don't need a toupee. You can just put a bit of powder on your head, stop the glare, and I think everything will be good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll start, start wearing a hat. I mean, I'm, I'm at that age now. <laughs> yeah, just give the kids some uh, markers and let them go wild. <laughs> I have some I have some pictures um, <laughs> because face paint is now the rage in our house uh, and of ah. course uh, at least <laughs> and, and the youngest is really like and she got her look nailed and uh, I mean if if we'd let her she would go to the kindergarten with face paint every day and of course they were having fun as I was thinking well this looks fun I'm not going anywhere today so <laughs> I mean <laughs> I never put full clown makeup on, so I just went wild, and it was really fun. <laughs> you should have really taken it off before we did this recording, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so, other than the extension to my bench and the overhead mount, um, I fixed the thickness of planer. Oh, Ooh. nice! Yeah, it's working again. It was the it was the capacitor. It was, Ooh. yeah. So eight quid fix, which is not bad. That's the best kind of fixes. <laughs> yeah, well, free fixes are the best kind, but eight uh, quid. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's true. But that's <laughs> close enough. 
The question yeah. is, did you buy two? Because uh, it seems like Tim is in need of one as well. <laughs> <laughs> bit, of, bit of size difference, I think, in capacitors. I mean, I think... Nah, capacitors is capacitors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's exactly how they work yeah yeah, yeah. He, was, he was describing today that his was the size of a red bull can and mine's the mine's the size of a pencil sharpener <laughs> yeah now that sounds about right yeah I, I remember that that was one of the um, that was one of the fun things they did at my father's school. It was uh, like uh, you were charging up these small capacitors and you just left it in the the lab coat pockets of other people. And then, of course, <laughs> they put their hands down and they got their, like a real <laughs> smack on the fingers. <laughs> and then, of course, this is lower voltage, but uh, I was into building car stereos at a younger age. And then you had this huge, massive capacitors. Uh, of course, lower voltage, but they were the size of this can. Oh and, uh, I mean, they were like terrifyingly scary because if you shorted those out, it's so much <laughs> energy just. Uh... <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, we just have... used. Sorry. Uh, when I studied uh, electronics at high school or whatever, it's year, I mean, year 10, 11, 12, uh, we just took those small. Uh, capacitors loaded them up and just folded the legs so they almost touched and then you throw them at people because then you when, when someone throws something small at you you catch it and you catch it it's short and you, poof. So that was really funny we thought yeah that sounds the safe. people we threw at that did not think it was that funny <laughs> you've got to know a little bit about what you're doing when you start messing about with electronics like that haven't you yeah I mean, I I did shock myself once with a knife project. <laughs> did you? Yeah. When I was, I wonder how 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 are what which of the electrodes are that that was one hundred and sixty volts. <laughs> Felt that one. I I think it's maybe twice, maybe three times I've I've managed to shock myself with uh, two forty volts and. Uh, it it was kind of nice having the first one like uh, just uh, out in the park, so to say. Um, so now I know how it feels like, and it really keeps you on edge. I mean, it's not something I try to seek <laughs> out. <laughs> so. no. I've never never done it. I've um, I've shorted the electric out the trip switches out in the house by messing about, but I've never actually yeah. felt a shock. Yeah, only, off a, only off a cattle fence, and they're horrific. Yeah, those, I mean, those aren't, aren't lethal at well, at least so. No, that's... but it does feel like every bone in your body has been rattled, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the the thing with having electric shock is that if you get a, a proper proper shock, you should really go see uh, see a doctor. But uh, but people generally are, are partly are ashamed of. Of getting the shock because it, I mean, you feel stupid for doing it, and then you get a little riled as well. So you don't really, you you can get some internal damage without knowing it because because of the shock as well. So it's it's not something you should look for. No, no. Oh, I did actually experience. I've I've done that quite a few times. The the cow fences, but the, uh, I, it was as a kid. One time we were actually crawling crawling under them. And of course, I touched the wire with my spine, and that's where the, <laughs> the central nervous system is going down. So that really knocked me out. It was like a blackout there for like half a second before I just came to my senses, or maybe just I just grounded through your hands yeah. and knees as well. So it's just yeah. a perfect circuit. So I really there. felt that one. <laughs> and then, of course, it's a classic one when you're going to uh, um, well, going home from a party and you're just gonna step aside of the road and have a leak and then you don't see the the fence in the dark and you just pee on it that is also <laughs> a experience yeah growing up on a farm i i learned that you should not never pee on a fence because you can't be sure if it's electrified <laughs> or not <laughs> yeah and for me it was just a classic of you know i think i was probably dared to touch the fence and you touch it really quickly and let go and you don't at that age, you don't realize it's pulses that are going through the yeah. fence, not a constant current. 
Yeah. Right, it doesn't work, and then he got a real good hold on it. And <laughs> bloody hell! <laughs> <laughs> I remember we used to take leaves and uh, strands of grass and that sort of thing, and 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 touch it with and see how how small piece of of greenery you could have because I mean the smaller. The, the higher the voltage. So if you had a big thing, you didn't feel anything, and just the smaller and smaller you got, the, <laughs> okay. the more current you got. Yeah, that was the the standard way of testing if it was actually a live wire before you tried climbing over it. Um, but we had, oh, this is quite a few while ago, but we got an um, uh, like a rescue dog. And the first weekend we had it, I was out walking and then she was sniffing on something uh, by the side of the road. And of course, there was an old fence that has been knocked down or anything. So it was covered by grass. So we didn't see it. But of course, she she got a shock and then, of course, she got afraid. So she jumped and then she tangled herself into it. So she got a couple <laughs> oh, of more Jesus. shocks. And then, of course... <laughs> Since we've had her only a week, she wasn't really, like, this safe on us yet. And then, of course, she just got up and ran away. And, of course, I let go to try and untangle her. And then she got loose and she ran. And I think we spent 24 hours. Uh, my sister drove for eight hours from her home place uh, to come and help in finding her because there were a lot of people involved. Because there's a huge mountainside and she just leapt into the forest and then, but finally, we got around to finding her, and then she was all happy and wagging her tail and so on. But yeah, it was a uh, poor thing. Yeah, it's not fun. She never went near a fence again. <laughs> no. <laughs> Dogs are generally smart like that. They do normally learn the lesson first time round, don't they? Yeah, unless some of, <laughs> some other of us. <laughs> yeah, so that's fun. That's summer memories, which brings me back to them. I'm really looking forward to summer now so. yeah i don't re I, I don't really remember summer did we ever have summer hasn't it, it was, been, been winter always it feels like it at least yeah. it was very rainy our summer here last year but uh, we've had a good couple of days just lately actually i was i was in shorts on saturday <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh you it's about, southerners it's about, it's about 15 <laughs> degrees <laughs> <laughs> Well, I have been looking out the window and mm, because I, I usually switch to summer clothing like the 1st of March because that's officially the date of spring. And then, of course, yeah. Yeah. But that's not going to happen this year. <laughs> no, it looks a bit like it's uh, it might be uh, April, maybe, before I do, <laughs> do the switch. Yeah, I've made that mistake. I'm just having a date in mind and switching and have some really cold days at work, especially the mornings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, the date you switch to to shorts is when I don't have my long johns anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically October to March for me. It's <laughs> because I don't like freezing. Talking of long johns, you've just done some. Uh, you did a bit of sewing the other day, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> I, the classic extending of the of the trousers <laughs> because if i get them uh, correct for my waist they're this not enough to go to my feet <laughs> so to say <laughs> is it always 12 centimeters is it pretty standard no it's about like 10 centimeters uh i think i i went a bit tight a bit smaller uh in the waist size for these to fit me even even better because it doesn't matter how many X's you put before the large, they don't get any longer. I mean, right. XL is the is the longest. Then you just get wider <laughs> and wider and wider. It's not like they think that that f fat people can be tall as well. No, so I, I generally have to do it. I mean, I and I've had these uh, sweatpants lying around for like almost half a year, I think. And uh, this is the to do pile. Yeah. Uh, I noticed so. they, they were in your favourite absence of colour, weren't they? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. The monochrome uh, wardrobe still <laughs> reigns. Yes. So now I actually cleaned out that that uh, sewing pile. So now I might might even do a, a sewing project. I think, perhaps eventually, we we'll see. <laughs> 
I mean, I have I have a work table now that's basically free of stuff other than a sewing machine. So <laughs> that's a good start, I think. Just for the audience, KJ keeps looking around at the workbench just to make sure it's still clear. <laughs> 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 the terrorists in your house that fill up your workbenches. <laughs> yeah, and he's named me. <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I'm all about I want clean uh, clean workspaces, but then when I come, oh, I'm just gonna put this down here, and then I fill it up, and then the different me comes and clears it out, and a different me comes and puts stuff down. So it's a constant yeah. bant- battle with with myself. Well, um, the six year old the other day said that she wanted a workshop so she could make things, and of course that was my proudest moment. And then of course I followed up with, but. You can go down in mine and make whatever you want. And then she followed up with, yeah, and when you die, it's all ours. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you're you're not wrong, but yeah. (laughs) Thanks for that commentary. (laughs) I've got uh, something similar as well, actually. Yeah. But in... And she's she's been into dresses since uh, she was two and... If she gets to choose, she would like to see uh, YouTube videos on my phone of people making dresses. And then I've always wanted a bust for clothing purposes. Uh, I do like fiddling around with the sewing machine. And then I just said, well, on Saturday, um, because she likes to draw, I said, you can just draw a dress or a skirt. And then we go to the the clothing store and uh, buy some some fabric uh, that you like, and then we can have fun. Hopefully, uh, I'm able to convince her uh, that we'll try a skirt because I think we can pull that off as mm-hmm. a beginning. But yeah, that's going to be yeah. a fun project, I think. Oh, be nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just get some stretchy fabric and then it, it will work out. <laughs> yeah, or suspenders. I mean, that's. <laughs> that's <laughs> You can always tuck it in. Yeah. (laughs) I think she's a bit young for suspenders. (laughs) (laughs) Only your kind. Yeah, only your kind. (laughs) Because that that was the thing I was expecting when KJ said Long John's and you, Glenn, just, well, Long John's. And I was, oh, it means something else in uh, Glenn language. (laughs) But no, surprisingly, you didn't say anything. (laughs) Same thing. (laughs) Sometimes you get it right. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> to you and far between, in between, but yeah. <laughs> Do you mean few and far between? <laughs> <laughs> I rest my case. <laughs> Did you make anything in the workshop with your daughter? Uh, no, uh, we haven't no. gotten this far. Uh, no, um, she's been she's been under the weather again for a. Uh, couple of days so she's been staying at home with her mother um so we're planning on doing something on on saturday which nice. is going to be nice i've been trying to convince them and of course i've been looking at like uh pink toolkits or or whatever and i think that they're still kind of young and that they are actually showing an interest at this point is a, a major win so of course i yeah. don't want to push it on them because then they're just gonna like oh so yeah. yeah, just try to encourage them yeah. whenever they show that spark of wanting to make something and go yeah. ahead. <laughs> every every time I manage to coax one of my kids down in the workshop to do something, we end up making a mallet. That's yeah. the go to thing. <laughs> because you take one one piece of one big piece of wood and one a handle and put them together in some way and then you have something you can bash stuff with and that's that's oh, the best thing you can do apparently. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's a really nice thing about having a workshop that's not built to be like a statement piece. So, of course, I was just knocking together a, like a, a cupboard or whatever under the sink. And then my daughter wanted to, to use the drill and just like, yeah, have at it. So she drilled maybe 30, 40 holes. Uh, and then, of course, they got covered by some OSB later on. But... <laughs> That is maybe three years ago, and she's still talking about that. Ooh, I remember that time I were allowed yeah. to drill. So it's like, that's <laughs> the kind of experience I want them to have in the workshop, not uh, 
oh, I need to hold the, the flashlight or the tripod for daddy while he's angrily yeah, screaming, yeah. Uh, <laughs> keep still, I think we're, on, we're only on the 30th take or something, so yeah. And that's what, what, it, what it was like growing up, for me at least. I mean, my dad has had workshops all over the, the farm, more or less. And yeah. you always knew, I mean, I can go in and, and take whatever I want, more or less, and do whatever I, I feel like, as long as I try to stay reasonably safe. So I, mean, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't touch the chainsaws or, or I mean, the the really dangerous things that I wasn't old enough to even lift properly. Yeah. But otherwise, I was free to do what I wanted, and that was That's I mean, nice. no limits. Yeah, my my dad was actually a carpenter, and. Um... We, we weren't allowed to touch the tools, <laughs> help him, watch him. All you're allowed to do was who and ah when he finished the job and tell him what a good job he'd done. And that was that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, that's a bit on the too little side. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, being, that being said, I have had that thought because uh, they think it's fun to see daddy on TV <laughs> because. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes I'm I'm sitting and editing while they're watching the TV in the background, and they come over and like, ooh, I would like to film myself and uh, put myself on the TV and so on. And I'm just thinking, hmm, maybe I got some editors to edit my videos, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you become their editor. <laughs> yeah, that's probably. I mean, the, the the smallest one that's doing the clown makeup, she's probably gonna have a makeup channel on YouTube within a few years. <laughs> probably making millions <laughs> it might be a key to retirement definitely yeah, encourage yeah, yeah. that <laughs> yeah just have to sa- give them a sandbox to play in before you let them out in the yeah. real on the internet <laughs> yeah my daughter's um, been in the workshop um, several times we've been we've made things together but she, of course she's a little bit ho- older which helps but we've even made a youtube short together before you know, the whole project and then the edit. Yeah, nice. Which has been nice. Yeah, it's been really nice. And then, you know, Michelle comes and joins us as well. And then occasionally the mother-in-law. So we've, <laughs> we've actually had Friday and Saturday nights in the workshop as a full family. <laughs> yeah, that's a dream. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. That's too many people. <laughs> that's too you need many a bigger people. workshop, yeah. That, yeah. But then you can sell the idea yeah. of needing a bigger workshop if it's too, too grand. Yeah. <laughs> we normally end up telling my mother-in-law to sit in the corner and don't touch anything <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's I don't ex- I don't even hope that they become makers but I want them to be at that level where they actually believe that statement of how hard can it be and that they are actually yeah. capable of uh, hanging up pictures or uh, knocking together some uh cheap ass ikea furniture and painting a wall or something i mean that's yeah. to me that's basic knowledge that you should know but surprisingly i know a lot of people my age that uh, they need help putting a yeah. Yeah. picture <laughs> up or painting a wall or whatever yeah no that's very true um, i mean me and michelle have always since we've been together we've always diy together and you know she has picked up so much knowledge and actually surpassed me in so many ways and various things that we do as well yeah so it's you know but she's she's just made her very capable and you know you'd hate to get into that situation where one of you passes away and the other one can't do a thing for themselves yeah yeah so i think it's nice just the basics like wiring plugs and things like that i think so important for the kids to learn i know adults that can't wire a plug yeah but that yeah. being nice, I, I've come to that threshold. At least they are thinking that when daddy passes away, the workshop will be ours. So at least they are uh, mentally on the way to uh, <laughs> sizing it up for their purpose. Yeah. And we can move all that rubbish tools out of the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fill it full of makeup. <laughs> oh, your, tool, your tools is just going to be props on the wall. It's like... Ooh, this vintage uh, <laughs> yeah. crap that daddy had laying around. Let's just put it on the wall and call it the uh, workshop cheek or something like that. <laughs> yeah, the thing the thing I have to remind myself of, of when it comes to to the families, what, what I felt 
the the one negative thing about my upbringing is that we had the some kind of a- agreement that the person more suited for the job is the one who should both do it. So it was not not, not that much collaborations. No. Because when it, when it was something to do with fabric, then my mother did it. And uh, when it was, I mean, something to do with wood, my dad did, did it. And uh, yeah. that sort of thing. And and also my mother, who who never been a fan of cooking, had the approach, oh, cooking is so boring. You shouldn't have to do it. I'll do it instead. <laughs> and that's a really stupid way to go about it. Yeah, that's a... That's a new take. Yeah. Uh, so, so I, I try to remember that that I, sh- I shouldn't because I mean I'm, I'm the best one in the family when it comes to electronics. So, but I shouldn't do all the wiring work just because I know it the best. But it, no. it, it mostly ends up that I do it anyway. But <laughs> just remember to invite the other, other other people in the family when it's uh, something that they they should be able to do that they should do yeah that can be really hard at times and that's that's the one thing i'm thinking of that when my kids are doing basically anything that i don't just grab whatever it is that they're doing out of their hands and let me show you and then i just do it for them so it's a and it's like if you need help if you need guidance i will give it to you but of course you I can sit and watch and see that, all right, it's not going to be maybe the best result, but I see the value in them actually just having to try and problem solve on their own. I mean, the result yeah. can be crappy, but the process of getting there is actually what is valuable to them. Yeah, the problem solving my eyes. Is in, and yeah. At some anything. point you've come to that, that all right, if the... If the painted trim around the door is not spot on on all places, like I can still live comfortable in the house. It it doesn't need to be a showpiece because then that's the only thing you're doing. Yeah, and to be fair, the kids aren't really that good at taking advice either. But no, I <laughs> I've been on this earth forty three years. I have been in this situation that you are right now. I have some pointers to give. No. Nope. I'm not going to listen at all. Well, your, your 43 years counts nothing when I know it all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that ex- that's correct. exactly. Yeah. I think the thing is when you get to 43, 48, they start, they start thinking of you as not having, you don't have the latest updates, basically. <laughs> <laughs> that's an obsolete model. They just stop yeah, doing updates right. for it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, no, no sense in updating the firmware on that one. <laughs> Let it run until it goes out. Well, that being said, I mean updating firmware. I, I kind of took it personal last week when Glenn said, "Well, you talk about all these things you want to buy, but you never buy anything." So, <laughs> so uh, just in spite, I ordered a battery for, <laughs> for my drill this week. <laughs> At least I can say I ordered something. Yeah. Ooh, a battery. <laughs> How many batteries do I already have? Oh, six to eight. But uh, th- this one is slightly bigger and will uh, let my smallest drill be able to stand upright. So, yeah. Spite buying batteries, that's brilliant. I'll show. I'll show him. Yeah. <laughs> I have been showed. I'm yeah. really sorry about <laughs> I'm not buying tools, my ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that hurt my heart. I mean, KJ's bought more tools than you. Don't use them, but he's bought more than you. <laughs> yeah. I buy them, never use them. Yep, that's me. But that I actually thought about KJ here because I, I was outside cutting the um, the grid for the for the table, and then I used my. I have a small angle grinder. And even with the best battery, uh, I mean, I think it was uh, uh, something uh, special type of steel or something. I just bought it on a sale. Uh, so it, it really worked to cut through it. And I like, all right, this this is my 
just I, I've been thinking about getting a, a a larger size battery angle grinder for a long time. And fuck it, I'm going inside and ordering one now. Sat down by the computer. And I think Bosch has twelve different eighteen volts <laughs> models with different numbers, and I was just reading and trying to compare and. Probably most of them are okay, but and they give the sizes and everything. And I just realized, no, I need to go to a store that have them. I need to hold them in my hand. Jesus. And then yeah. I just ended up going outside. And then I realized I have this uh, uh, bike lock cutter uh, from my bike stealing days, I guess. Uh, so uh, I thought you were going to say extension cord. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually have an angle grinder on uh, a corded one, but the cord is, I mean, the outer insulation on the cable is missing on several parts. So you have just uh, the inner cords with their isolation and it has um, it has the grading tool for stone on it. And I, I don't want to take that off and use it for anything. So that's the only thing I'm using it for. So, and then... Huh. It's it's snowy and getting the extension cord and no I just uh, yeah, but uh, then I found out I had this uh, huge pliers or whatever it's called uh, for cutting bike chains and that really works. It like and then it was done. <laughs> Makes it much easier, doesn't it, when you've got a big pair of scissors? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a lot more quiet than an angle grinder as well. Yeah, that as well. Well, I mean, that's, uh, well, I don't mind the noise as much, but uh, yeah. I mean, the, the the noise is a thing with the, with the kids as well. Going back to that, when you're standing angle grinding away or welding, and then you feel a tug on your leg, and they're standing right beside you. No, you can't be here right now. <laughs> Not without some kind of protection gear. <laughs> yeah. The last time I was welding, I was outside, and uh, my daughter and a friend were hanging out in the bedroom. Uh, window shouting at me like, look away look away <laughs> Ooh, a shiny light yeah. yeah do it again dad <laughs> so uh you got some new parts today oh me oh, oh yes you oh yes um it's been a I have been waiting a few days because when you order parts from China, at some point you get a message from the Norwegian Postal Service that they have registered a package incoming and then you get tracking on it. And then I found out that uh, almost all the parts that I'm waiting for is inbound. And of course, the, the computer that I'm going to implement into the Hellcorder is it's it's still been laying in the line of getting shipped, but that is now also on the way. But uh, today I got the screen and a lot of the cables and so on. So uh, before the podcast, I have been dis- designing the front covers to implement uh, the screen, which is going to be nice. And when I opened the package today and just picked it up, it's... I mean, I, I haven't had the ability to test it yet, but just the build, the build quality, it's ridiculously good for that price. So it's a, uh, I mean, it's overkill for the entire build, but it's going to be yeah. nice. Yeah. No, it, it looked really exciting. I'm really quite jealous. I want to build something with a computer in it, but I haven't got a clue what to build with a computer in it or how to make that happen. I mean, you can just <laughs> build hammer. a computer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, apart from putting my computer in a box, I, I wouldn't know what to do with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, I don't, I don't, I can't remember the last time I built my own stationary computer. That's years ago. So if I were to buy all the parts and build it from scratch, I wouldn't even know where to start anymore. But a lot of things have happened. So now you get, at a reasonable price, this is the size of a, I think it's 13 times 13 centimeters or something and seven centimeters thick. It's like a a oversized toast, basically. I mean, mean, it's (laughs) it's probably just as powerful as my laptop. But uh, yeah, it it really makes it easy to put into anything. And I've seen this. uh, I've seen a lot of projects where people are using like... uh, Arduinos, well, I, I use those myself, but you also have the Raspberry Pis, but they're starting to grow a bit in size. 
and they're still kind of basic and then someone showed a price comparison that if you're gonna build them and put some attachment on them and, and actually use them for something you're just better off just buying a off-the-shelf miniature computer which i now have done so uh yeah. and it comes pre-installed with windows as well so it's just plug and play so well that's much easier yeah well you have to do much work to get everything to talk all the programs to talk to each other and um most likely yes yeah. <laughs> um, in theory it should be plug and play but it, it never is and of course the the midi cards that i bought which are controlling the valves for the recorders is now i think they're at least 15 years old they're getting closer to that i think they're so it's not state-of-the-art design of course yeah the 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 fine thing about midi is an old system so nothing has changed there basically but of course uh, the interface and the software on the computer side has evolved so there might be some patchwork and programming to do to get them to yeah. talk together so how are you so sure that all your wiring and everything is sound that you've got everything connected up is that is it the same as the last helicopter or yeah it's it's, uh, it's basically backtracking whatever i did um the last time so it should be good to go but of course this time the difference is the um, the converter card i had last time from the guitar signal to the midi signal was using this old five pin midi plug but now that i'm using a computer of course i just used a usb input because that's much more easier but then again it might add to the complexity so uh yeah, we'll see. But I but I'm positive. And if it doesn't work, I, I have a computer for other things. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that's probably the biggest danger, isn't it? That that computer will be ripped out of there and used for something else in the future. Oh, that's gonna be in a pitch I, I, or a pinch, I might remove it and use it for something else, but then I would probably have another one ordered to put in place because I'm thinking with the amount of hours I'm now putting in, and uh, not to talk the equipment cost, it. I mean, if it works reasonably well, I don't think I want to take it apart because it's going to be a party yeah. piece that when people are coming over, like, uh, and especially now when it has a computer in it, because you have basically all the songs in the world, you can get them in MIDI format, so it's more... I mean, you don't even have to play the guitar. You can just use it as a jukebox and people can come <laughs> with requests. I want to hear Tw Taylor Swift's last song. All right, let me download and press play. And then, so yeah. You ever thought about, I know this is the HAL chord and, you know, it makes the recorder noise when you play another instrument through it, but you ever thought about putting a, a nicer instrument on the end of it? So it plays the wow. piano, for instance. Well, a lot of that has been done, of course. Um, oh, okay. But of course, could I do the reverse? It would probably oh. be easier that if you play a recorder and you get an electric guitar out at the other end. That would be cool. <laughs> that would be very, very cool. <laughs> and uh, now I also know someone who actually pray, plays the recorder uh, fairly well, uh, having it as a full-time profession. So I might get some... <laughs> Pointers. That would be a good season three for, for the Hell Quarter saga. <laughs> Just oh, that's, the uh, of yeah. course, as with any project, while you're working, you get ideas. And, of course, one of the things that I think I will add is a pedal board uh, where you can use the pedals to adjust the air pressure. And then, of course, you can switch the volume between the, the now integrated guitar amplifier. Um, and then, of course, the reason for getting the organ was to try to see if I can build like a bellows systems. Um, I actually saw something interesting on uh, Look Mom No Computers channel, uh, but he probably get a lot of requests. So I did. I, I thought my questions probably drowned in the middle there, but I want like a mechanical bellows at the end because I don't want a hose and a vacuum cleaner at the end of it but i think i'm going to draw the line there once i've done that i i i can't go for a third iteration um 
<laughs> of course, I'm saying that now, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this time next year. What are you working on, Havard? Well... <laughs> oh, yeah. in three, yeah. <laughs> got an old van, so now it's going to be portable. And, uh, we've got, we're, we're going on tour and... Uh, it works. It's, it works so well for the winter gathering. So let's just follow that path. Yeah. I think I saw it on the TV actually um, late last year. There was a guy who built a little shed on top of his trailer and put a piano in it so he could travel around and play his piano for people. Yeah. <laughs> um. On that subject, of course, I've been diving a bit down in the rabbit hole that is the um, the Red Bull Soapbox Challenge. So I have been reading up on the rules, uh, <laughs> ticking all the boxes for the, the organ build. Um, but there is a weight limit. I mean, the car cannot weigh more than 80 kilos. Can and I just I'm stop like, you there? Can I just stop you there? Is this where you're telling me I'm too fat to be the driver? No, no, because that's uh, <laughs> it's without the driver. I mean, the weight of the uh, driver okay. is, is not into that, but the car <laughs> itself in, it, in its lightweight cannot exceed 80 kilos. And I'm pretty sure that uh, the organ is, it might not be much over, but it is in that ballpark. And if you then are going to add uh, like a, a carriage with the secondary wheels for turning and so on, you, you're going to pass that limit. Surely. Of course, you can uh, probably shed some weight <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> just, just make the uh, frame and the, the the parts where you sit out of IKEA furniture, the cardboard stuff. Yeah, and then the question is: of course, it's it's a bit of a leading question, and they might be a bit suspicious. But uh, this weight limit—do you actually weigh them at some point, or is it just <laughs> like uh... <laughs> we do now? <laughs> yeah, we're doing now. Yeah. <laughs> then again like uh, the italians in rally they are i mean cheating is a part of uh, motorsport so uh, of course we can just uh, put it on the start line and then someone just uh, jump over from the last sides and just slap some extra part on like the last yeah. second and set off <laughs> <laughs> how much does the hell call do i just ask him for a friend <sighs> i i'm <ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> The last one was heavy because of all the solenoid valves. Yeah. Um, it was probably, I think it was uh, getting closer to 20 kilos. Um, and of course, with the now lighter valves, it should be lighter. But then I beefed up the materials and now adding a lot more <laughs> equipment and a speaker huh. and a guitar amplifier. So it's probably going to be get close to a 30 kilograms i'm guessing so uh, the handles oh, on the side is really helpful but it's not something that you want to lift without uh, using your legs instead of your back so um <laughs> well I, there we go then i mean that's 50 kilos to play with isn't it just mount that on the uh, red bull car you can play <laughs> the guitar through it <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that, 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 that could work yeah that could work yeah. I, I need to I need to think about that because it, I it's always uh, I've done a lot of these soapboxes when I was a kid and it's bloody good fun and doing the soapbox race as a challenge uh, would be brilliant. So I think um, we'll maybe end it there for this week. So thanks for listening, everybody. We'll see you in a couple of days for the half pipe. Oh, Bye. Yes. Bye. See ya. <laughs>